there is nothing more dangerous than airshow flying. Did you notice the altimeter showed 100 feet? Performing aerobatics that close to the ground is a high area of vulnerability and leaves virtually no margin for error. The risk of a fatal outcome if you don't perform perfectly is close to 100%. Watch that clip again and notice before the roll, I pop the nose up above the horizon. This creates a visual reference as I roll to keep the nose in that position and puts it where it needs to be when inverted. The only other risk reduction strategy is to fly higher and put the biggest threat, the ground, further away. But people go to air shows to see danger, not planes flying high where they look like little birds. As an airshow pilot, I'm happy to deliver as long as the threats and errors can be mitigated and risks reduced. This is how threat and error management is key to safety. Before I continue, let's define threats, errors, and risks. A threat is something that can harm you, such as the ground or another pilot in their plane flying near you. An error is a crew action or inaction leading to a bad outcome. And a risk is the likelihood of something happening, especially when you are vulnerable to a threat. Watch this video from the Aerobatic Racing Challenge. This is an air show act we came up with where two airplanes fly side by side, a few hundred feet apart, following the same aerobatic sequence, but they're not in formation. The goal is to try and race through the sequence, whereas each pilot can choose how quickly or slowly they execute each maneuver, managing things like throttle, acceleration, speed, and so forth. It's really entertaining, especially if the air show announcer can call it like it's a horse race. It's a lot of fun to fly, it's a lot of fun to watch, but it also required quite a bit of threat and error management before we could execute it before a live crowd. Let's listen to the announcer calling the race, and this is key to its entertainment value. And smoke is on with Bill Cornick first as they dive into the box. They do a roll to get in. They're diving, diving for airspeed, and they're gonna go ahead and pull up. Spencer gets into the first, he pulls seven Gs with Bill going next. Bill looks over his shoulder, he's looking at Spencer. They both do a half roll, who's gonna kick first? It is going to be Spencer Suderman kicks first. He is in the lead at this point. Spencer is going to see if he can get these maneuvers done quicker than Bill. Bill speeds down off the upline, and they both pull to the horizontal. Both of them, seven Gs on their body. Spencer pulls first, he's going back in to a reverse. He's gonna tap Cuban. They're even, Bill is. And in the catch-up mode here, he rolls, he rolls. Okay, Bill is taking the lead now. Spencer got a slow roll on that one. Oh, I think Bill's looking inside the line, too. Yep, they have to get enough energy for the avalanche. That is a loop with a snap roll on top. They both snap oh, at the snap. same time. Okay, coming down off, it looks like Spencer's got the edge. It's not formation, as one of us is not flying in reference to the other. We reference our position in relation to the runway beneath us to maintain separation. The threats are the ground and each other. We agreed to use a 500 foot hard deck to mitigate the increased risk from being too low and reduce vulnerability to an unrecoverable error. If either pilot goes below 500 feet, gets off their line or loses sight of the other, then either pilot can call and knock it off and fly the escape procedure as briefed. Watch this point of view from my helmet camera. In sight. In sight. We stay about 300 feet apart using ground references. I'm on the inboard side of the runway closer to the crowd, while the other pilot stays outboard of the runway. We brief that the runway must stay between us. Every time we change lines from horizontal to vertical, we call each other in sight to verify separation. But we stay more focused on the ground when on a downline. These mitigation strategies give us time to think and respond if a risk increases unexpectedly. This is safer than a no-time threat where we must react and hope for a good outcome. Hope is a terrible strategy. Let's apply threat and error management to a workplace environment. Threats are everywhere and can be time or no time and be big or small. No-time threats are true emergencies, such as a fire you need to put out now or leave the area immediately. Time threats can be dealt with later when you have gathered data and made a plan. Your supervisor suddenly appears at your desk with no warning. Hello, Peter. What's happening? This is a time threat. Create time to deal with the situation when you are ready. 
We have sort of a problem here. Yeah, you apparently didn't put one of the new cover sheets on your TPS reports. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, I forgot. Mm, yeah. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. I just uh, forgot, but uh, it's not shipping out till tomorrow, so there's no problem. Notice how Peter took responsibility and acknowledged the error, was contrite and apologized then came up with an action plan to course correct and ensure the lesson learned will improve future outcomes. He didn't drop everything to fix the error on the spot. There's a basic problem solving formula for threat and error management used all over the business landscape and particularly in customer service scenarios. It works well for time threats. Define the problem and create time if needed. Identify possible solutions, gather data, make a decision and implement, evaluate. Start the cycle over. Now let's look at another time threat. In this example, Peter sees the threat in advance and decides to create time and deal with it later when he has a plan and can respond effectively. Oh, Peter, what's happening? Listen. Uh... If you want more information on threat and error management, I'll link below to an online brief and a paper published in 2006 by the University of Texas Human Factors Research Project. If you enjoyed this video, then click like and subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, fly safe.